Hey guys, it is Lily here from Crafting Through Mental Health. I hope you guys are well and have had an awesome week. This week is Eating Disorder Awareness Week. The charity called Beat is campaigning to stop discrimination, get people help for eating disorders. Their campaign this year is to sock it to eating disorders. So what they want you to do is wear the brightest, colourfulest socks you can get. And I'll show you my ones in a minute. You weren't, I didn't plan to do this. <laughs> can you see? Don't look at my hairy legs. The Selma from The Simpsons. And she has really hairy legs, which I have at the minute because it's winter and I do that. Anyway, they want you to wear the colourfulest shop. Talk about eating disorders. So before I get into it, I had an eating disorder. It started probably about 10 years ago now and I've been recovered probably about six or so years ago. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever gone through. If you want to see my story that I did for eating disorder awareness week a few years back, I will have it up in the cards up here and also linked down below. And that kind of explains what happened, why I had one and how I sort of felt with it. So what I wanted to do today was kind of debunk the myths with eating disorders. So I'm going to read out some common things people think and sort of say what the reality is and what is the truth because people don't talk about eating disorders and they don't really say much about these sort of things. So the important thing is to sort of start talking about it and then we can sort of stop these stereotypes and stop this discrimination. Do parents cause eating disorders? Basically, no. Eating disorders are sort of, they can be caused by your biology, they can be caused by mental trauma. I think when they just say it's a full no, that's not fully true. I do believe some parents, if you had abusive parents and stuff like that, they could probably cause it. That would be a very small percentage of people that have eating disorders who have parents who are like that. Uh, majority of people who have them, their parents don't want them to have eating disorders and they haven't caused them to have eating disorders. I think it's very simple. Back in the day, it was like autism was blamed on the mother not being giving the child enough affection and stuff like that. And that's not the reality at the end of the day. It's different. People want to blame the parents, but it's not the parents. And the parents at the end of the day will blame themselves and say what have I done wrong and if you're a parent watching this it's not your fault and it's very difficult to go through but remember your child is their own person you're not responsible for everything and the best thing you could do is get them help. It seems like everyone has an eating disorder nowadays. A lot of people believe that there is a lot of there's more autism now and there's there's more diagnosis people are more aware doctors are more likely to put it into a condition which is a good thing because then you can get help and stuff like that it's not always bad to be diagnosed with something i feel like there's been a decrease from the sort of 2000s i think in the 2000s there was a lot of magazines with very very skinny people and stuff like that and i think it has moved in a better direction that it's not all just skinny people it is people of all sizes and a bit more self-love so i feel like actually it's gotten down but i don't i don't know this by fact but that's how i just feel in myself and they've always been around eating disorders have always actually been around so about two million women and one million men will have one in their lifetime to put this into perspective, in 2007, 0.9% of women and 0.3% of men had anorexia at some point. 3.5% of women and 2% of men had a binge eating disorder. So a lot of people just think that it's anorexia and starving yourself, but binge eating is a massive thing and actually more people have it. So even though a lot of people go on to the anorexia and all that, actually binge eating is a huge thing as well. Are eating disorders even serious? Yes. Sadly, out of all psychological conditions and illnesses, eating disorders are the most fatal. I, out of everything, 
I had. So I had a long list of conditions back when I was a teenager. I had depression, anxiety, um, my eating disorder and my self-harm. Even though you'd think self-harm is probably more dangerous and I'm not saying it's not, it is very dangerous and you need to be ridiculously careful with it. Eating disorders are a lot more damaging. I think long term wise they can be a lot more damaging and I knew people that did end up in hospital from having eating disorders and that can be from binge eating, all of them can cause damage. Mine caused damage. It, I found that I was very weak and my body didn't really control energy very well and I've kind of recovered from it more now but I think what happened, I'm not a medical scientist, I don't think I am but what I think happened to my body was the fact I didn't eat, my stomach shrunk so when I did start eating again, I ate, whenever I ate a lot it would just come out somehow and my body would be like no that's not normal so I came sort of very ill from food sometimes and that could be certain foods so my body kind of came very intolerant to food now over the six years that I've been recovered I'm a lot better now also because of the fact that a lot of people with eating disorders will also be suicidal as well only girls have eating disorders well like the statistics show actually girls tend to have it more often than men but some studies say that men, it, men are increasing i think it's that sort of self-image thing men can sort of be sort of a little bit more it's not so much like oh we want to be dead skinny and all that but i still think that men have that problem of oh yeah you want a muscly man you want this you want that you don't want someone big or you do and that can really get to guys and i know a lot of guys that have suffered a lot from their own image and we can't just think oh it's just women it's just women men do suffer from it too yes maybe a little bit less so but there are still men out there who have eating disorders and have struggled with their looks and their weight and we need to be aware of that and include them in the conversation as well it's only teenagers that get it anyway no nope, any age even children can get eating disorders and having eating problems yes i think the number of teens and young adults is probably higher i don't know that by fact but i'm pretty sure it is like peaks and then probably goes back down but you can have one at any age you can hear you hear older people having them you hear people in their 30s yes you hear teenagers having them people in their 20s i think i'm very lucky that i had mine in my teens and now i'm recovered and i haven't had to deal with that while in a work environment and stuff like that anyway so those are the debunking i'm going to do today what are you doing for eating disorder week are you gonna wear some funky socks this week for it and i hope you guys have a fabulous week and i'll see you guys next friday